What's up, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube, Boogie2988, coming at your live once again through the power of the internet. And it's been about a year since the Nintendo Switch came out. And at the time, I recommended you pick up the system if you're a dedicated Nintendo fan. Now that I've had about a year to play with the system, I've had it in my pocket almost every day. I've taken it all over the world, and I played almost every game there is out for the system, first party, and a lot of third party games as well. I figured today we'd take a look at that recommendation and see whether or not it needs to be updated. And if so, why? I think one of the biggest issues with the Switch a lot of people were worried about was warping. But warping has not been a problem for me. There's no warping in my system. But then again, I very rarely play with it docked. I almost always play with it in handheld mode, uh, pretty much almost always on the go. So I guess it kind of makes sense. Uh, the system does get very, very hot, though, especially while playing it docked. So I can see why there would be warping. But I just want to say that mine has not warped at all. But that doesn't make it a durable system. And I want to show you, mine actually has a nice big chunk missing there where I have dropped it several times and a nice big chunk missing here where I've dropped it. Now, it, it doesn't keep the, the controllers from locking in. It doesn't really seem to negatively impact the system. It was never a waterproof system anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But I will say, uh, because of the little crack here, it does make it a little hard to close this case. And the back is a little bit kind of loose. It's not exactly in place. So I don't know how much longer the switch is going to continue to work because of those problems, but it's still working for sure now. Actually, I did just clean the screen, and I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there are definitely a couple of nicks there. Those are permanent nicks, so I guess I have damaged the screen a little bit, but not enough to where I even notice while playing it. God, I'll probably notice it now, though. I wish I hadn't done that, but yeah, I see them now. Now, if you've seen my videos, I am fairly rough on the system. Sometimes I knock it around. Sometimes I throw it across the room, almost always for a Francis sketch or a Francis rage. But on top of that, I mean, I travel with it quite a bit. So it's in a bag that gets dropped every once in a while. Sometimes it falls out of my pocket and hits the concrete. I I'm surprised. It's fairly robust. I think if your child is careful with one of these, if you get it for your teenager, if you get it for your preteen, I, I think they'll probably get similar cracks and stuff. But the screen has stayed steady. The I still have no scratches in the screen, even though I probably should to clean it for this video to show it to you. I mean, overall, a fairly sturdy system. I've never put a case on it. I've never put a screen protector on it, and it still works and functions great. Now, as a frame of reference, here's all of the games that I have been playing, if you want to take a look. Um, I, some of these are, you know, obviously di digital downloads. Some of these I have physical versions of, and some of the physical version games that I really did not like, I have uninstalled. So stuff like 123 Switch is missing, but there's plenty of good games on here. Wizard of Legend, I just started. Uh, Namco Museum was okay. Fire Emblems, Warriors, a decent game. This is a good port of Pinball Arcade. Binding of Isaac, probably one of my favorites on the system. Bayonetta 2 was fantastic. Mario Odyssey as well, fantastic. Kirby was okay. The port of Skyrim is fairly decent. Of course, Zelda Breath of the Wild is a system seller. SteamWorld Dig, I highly recommend. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Mario plus Rabbids, Kingdom Metal, I enjoyed. But I, I didn't get into it as much as everybody else. Stardew Valley, of course, an amazing game as well. Mario Kart Deluxe, Disgaea 5, which I beat in its entirety and then ground out a bunch of the DLC and post-game stuff. Uh, the Port of Shovel Knight here, very good. Uh, Splatoon 2, I don't know. There's a lot of good games on here. So these are a, a good chunk of the games as well. Some of the physical games that I no longer have installed. Um, I feel like I, I feel like I've definitely gotten enough games on this system to where it's it's been worth the entry price. And if you just played those games I mentioned above, I think that would be enough. But there's still plenty of games coming out as well. Now that I have them in my hand, I should talk about the Joy Cons a little bit. I have never gotten used to disconnecting the Joy Cons and playing them this way. I've wanted to get used to it. I just can't. It's, it's, it's not a bad system. It's just not a good system either. Sometimes I've played multiplayer games with it like this, and it always feels awkward and weird and so tiny in my hands, so I don't really care for it that way. Uh, keeping them separated like this and, and not docking them into the little handheld device that, that secures them together feels stupidly awkward. And you would think, since I'm such a big guy and I have to T-Rex a controller, it would probably be better to just go ahead and, and hold them down to the side. But even through hours of gameplay, I can just never get comfortable doing that. Now, putting it on their, their little dock um, that, that makes it a, a more of a full controller does feel a lot more natural, but... I think it was definitely worth the, the ticket price to get the Pro Controller if I'm going to play with the system docked, which I rarely do. Uh, but if I do, it's definitely worth doing the Pro Controller. The problem is I don't want to carry the Pro Controller around with me. I don't want to pack it. I don't want to take it with me. So that's kind of frustrating. 
But going back to game selection, I really feel like this, as like any Nintendo system, has an amazing first-party lineup. And I think it's worth the price of entry just to play Mario Odyssey, just to play Legend of Zelda. If you like the Dynasty Warrior games, then there's now Hyrule Warriors and the Fire Emblem version. Um, and then when it comes to the indie games, the indie game lineup here is absolutely phenomenal because... Indie games uh, sell better on the Nintendo Switch than any other system. So a lot of the smaller games, a lot of the independent games, a lot of the classic hits and some of the ones that never found a home anywhere else are finding a home in the Nintendo Switch. So if you like spending $5, 10 $15 on a very inexpensive game and getting a lot of gameplay out of it, that's a great place to do it. And probably the game that always comes to mind, again, would be Binding of Isaac. It feels so at home on the Switch. And I got used to playing that game with mouse and keyboard, but with this iteration of Binding of Isaac, I've gotten used to playing it on the Switch. And I actually forewent all of my previous saves because the only place I'll play Binding of Isaac now is on my Nintendo Switch. I love that version. I love that port. It's phenomenal. And I love being able to play it on the go. Now, when the Switch came out, I said I would probably always play it docked and I would never play it portable. And it turned out to be the exact opposite of the truth. I never play it docked and I always play it portable. The dock is pretty much just a charging machine for me. I play it in bed when I'm trying to fall asleep. I play it at the doctor's office when I'm waiting to meet him or I'm waiting for him to come into the room. I'm, I'm playing it after physical therapy and I'm in my little cool down session or I'm playing it when I'm on a machine or playing it out on a walk. I love the portability. It's exactly what I wanted. Yes, there's a trade-off when it comes to power level. It's not as powerful as the Xbox One or the PlayStation 4 or even close but yes, I love, I love being able to play this system on the go. I, it's completely replaced mobile gaming for me entirely. I don't take my iPad with me. I don't play anything on my phone. And I've left my 3DS at home. I just carry it on my Switch because there's so many good games to play on it that are easy to play and good in short 20 or 10 minute bursts. But then it's really not a full-fledged portable device either because obviously you have to connect to Wi-Fi anytime you want to connect to the internet. Um, and that, that's still fine, but there is no Netflix, there is no Hulu, there are no, like, traditional apps on the system, and that's probably one of the most frustrating things, because I would probably definitely use it for that, especially on the go, downloading Netflix movies and shows on the go and watching them in the car on a long car ride. That would be fantastic, um, and it's just not available for the system yet. And it's been a whole year, so if it's not available yet, I don't know why it's not available now. I think it's a, a conscious choice by Nintendo saying we don't want to involve that in the system, but hopefully, eventually, that stuff is coming. And that's not the only place that Nintendo has dropped the ball. Obviously, there are no ways to transfer your save files from one Nintendo Switch to the other. There's no way to back them up. There's there's no cloud even currently. Now, that will launch with the online service. You know, as long as you pay the $20 a year, you'll have access to cloud storage and presumably, hopefully, be able to switch from one Nintendo Switch to the other. And there's also a family plan, I believe, as well. So I, 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 that stuff is coming, but you'd think that stuff would be here a year later. And I think we all expected some sort of virtual console or something along that lines by now, retro games. So there have been some retro game releases in the store for like $7.99. There's the Super Mario Versus version. I think there was a Mario Brothers original version. I think there's been a handful of other smaller games either released by uh, another company or by Nintendo themselves. So that stuff is available. There are some retro games of the system, but no robust Netflix-like system that we were all hoping for. Now, with the launch of the online service, with your paid fee, you're getting access to I think it was total of 20 different retro games with more to come and I think they're free as long as you're paying that 20 bucks for the online service so again that stuff is coming but we are a year later and I would have expected it here by now. But I will say the system does exactly what it said it would do very, very well. It's a great system for some amazing first-party games. It has a lot of third-party support from indie companies, though not a lot of the big companies yet. And that's because it's not powerful enough to, to run most of the games that they are currently developing. But people are in the works for that, so I think maybe in year two and year three, we'll see more stuff like that. But if, if you're looking for something to play your indie games on, if you're looking for something to play a lot of really good first-party system sellers on, and you want to be able to do it portably, this system still does it. And hey, the best part is you can drop it a lot and it'll still work. I still haven't managed to break, the, break this thing. I have a backup in case I do. The losing my Zelda saves will ruin me, so I, I, I gotta be really careful. But do I recommend the Nintendo Switch? Uh, absolutely. I think it's a wonderful system. If you're interested in any of those first-party games or those indie games, you're going to love your system. And I think I recommend it even more than I did originally. It has a lot more use, and I've gotten a lot more use and played a lot more games on it than I had expected, and I think you guys will too. So let me know what you think in the comments section below, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. I love you very much, and I'll speak with you again soon.